Greetings in the name of Jesus, our soon returning King. I'm Tim Moore, the Director and Senior Evangelist of Lamb and Lamb Ministries, and this is Christ in Prophecy. I'm standing in our ministry studio in front of our brand new set. You know, Christians live anticipating the rapture and eagerly awaiting the joy that will flood the earth when He who sits on the throne in heaven makes all things new. Until He comes, we here at Lamb and Lamb Ministries look forward to utilizing this new set to glorify our Lord and Savior by expanding our ministry outreach. This new backdrop is designed to keep our connection with you, our viewers, vibrant and exciting. It is also part of our plan to connect with new audiences and new generations with the message that Jesus is coming soon. We are very grateful for those of you who have contributed to ensure that we stay fresh and engaging. This program is first airing on July 4th. America's 245th anniversary. Over its long history, America has experienced ups and downs, but our current descent into ungodliness is accelerating. Our nation and its leaders seem intent on offending the God who has blessed us so richly. Cast adrift from our foundations of Christian clarity, our culture is drifting further and further away from the Lord. Even those without spiritual discernment can recognize that something is amiss. Over the past 30 years, America has been systematically rejecting its own Christian heritage. And almost inexplicably, the ordered liberty that America once championed has morphed into unfettered personal autonomy. Reflecting the tragic observation in the Book of Judges, America now embraces the ideology of doing what is right in your own eyes. As an inevitable result of that moral breakdown, the land that once regarded e pluribus unum, out of many one, as its national motto, now seeks to divide people based on race and never-ending definitions of sexual identity. And our nation that defeated communism is now flirting with socialism. What happened? How could our city on a hill become a nation poised to descend into post-Christian chaos? Today's guest will address those questions. Jonathan Kahn burst on the national scene in 2011 with the publication of his best-selling book, the Harbinger. He offered an inspired biblical perspective on our national waywardness. Since then, he's written a string of bestsellers, including The Oracle and The Harbinger II in 2019 and 2020. These two books offer additional insight into the prophetic warnings God has been sending to America. Lamb and Lion Ministries had hoped to host Jonathan last year, but COVID disruption prevented us from getting together. Thankfully, we found a way to connect in 2021 at Jonathan's headquarters in Wayne, New Jersey. Well, obviously you have a gift for weaving together Bible prophecy, scriptural truths, and what I'll call nuanced definitions of Hebrew words to communicate compelling truths. So how did you come up with all the incredible insights that you share with us through your writing? Well, it's the Lord, you know, and as I, again, when I, usually it comes kind of like, I'll use this word, but download that it comes usually over, it could be like the Harbinger was over two months of just, whoa, 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 you know, and I could not reproduce that. Same with the Oracle, same with the Paradigm, same with all those things came just like that, you know, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and when I need the next key, it just, someone says the word or something. So the Lord really just, I have no question. I don't take any credit for it. The Lord, it's the Lord. I'd like to turn to the Oracle yes. first off. And so. I was particularly taken by a series of incredible coincidences <laughs> that you recounted in the Oracle. And in hindsight, it seems pretty obvious that there are no coincidences, but what are merely separate and seemingly unrelated threads of history that are being woven together by God himself into a beautiful tapestry. And we see that oftentimes in mm. hindsight, the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. For instance, you write about the journey of Mark Twain 
to the Holy Land, something I've talked about. He wrote a book mm -hmm. called Innocence Abroad, but that happened in 1867. So explain the significance yeah. of that year yeah. and how you came to understand it yourself. Yeah, well, there, there's a mystery. You know, it says the Oracle and it says the Jubilee and Mysteries Unveiled. The, the Jubilee was the time of restoration. And when, when whatever you lost, you get it back. You return home. Well, the Jewish people, there's been no people like Jewish people who have lost, you know, and yet God, we know prophetically in the end times is bringing them home. So could that mystery of the Jubilee actually be, be behind the restoration of Israel in the end times to this day? Well, the amazing thing is Moses said to, he said, he said, listen, you're going to be scattered all over the world. He says, and, says, and then a, he says, a stranger will come to the land and he will bear witness and he'll say, he'll say this land is cursed. It's beyond hope. And, and how could this, and then, and then he, then Moses then the first time he starts talking about, I'll bring you back. Well, amazing thing is, could that have ever happened? A stranger did come to the land and, and he came and he bore witness exactly what, in fact, he uses words that Moses said, he, certainly he did. would say, and it was Mark Twain, who was not a believer. And he comes and he writes the book. He has no idea he's being used for prophecy. And, and he does it in 1867. Now, now when he does it that year, becomes the beginning of the mystery because he does it when it's hopeless and all of a sudden strange things start happening in the land that and and for instance the same year Jerusalem after 2000 years is discovered biblical Jerusalem rises um the same year the land is released so that the Jewish people can purchase it same 1867 jubilee and if you count 50 years I won't go into it now but you count every 50 years the next 50 year from there the jubilee is 1917 that's the what happens anything happen the restoration of the land to the Jewish people Count another jubilee. It brings you to 1967, the restoration of Jerusalem, Six-Day War. Count another jubilee. Takes you to 2017. First time in 2,000 years, Jerusalem is re is proclaimed as the capital of Israel. Everything like clockwork. It is amazing. And, and 1967, you just touched on the fact, as you mentioned in your book, that the Ottoman Empire allowed Jews to begin buying land in 1867. In 1867, yeah. I'm sorry, 1867. And also, uh, Charles Warren began to explore yes. Jerusalem and, and discover Jerusalem. all of its uh, archaeological roots. Yeah. And fantastic yeah. coincidences, but there and, are no coincidences yes. with God. Yeah, I mean, listen, all, you'll get all of world history is happening that this could happen. I mean, even you have a world war, World War One. yet look at where it goes at the end. You know, you have a six-day war. You, all these things are coming together, including America. I mean, so it's amazing, yes. The uh, the other thing I will mention even about uh, Mark Twain, he is the quintessential American author, and he had such a grounding yeah. in biblical language, but he was not a believer himself. No. So he was not going looking for no. something to no. be fulfillment of Bible prophecy. He was almost a, an ultimate uh, skeptic, uh, yeah. but he wrote in such a way that he communicated clearly. All, all the more amazing that here is somebody who didn't even believe and is used by God to be to, to fulfill biblical prophecy. And before the end of his life, he ends up running into a man. They have a friendship. It turns out to be Theodore Herzl, who's going to be restoring Israel. I mean, it's amazing. Amazing, amazing. Well, you also like to reference yeah. uh, Jewish parashas or parashas, yes. uh, portions of Scripture that are allotted to be read each day yes. within the Jewish community. Where did that allotment of Scripture portions originate, and how did you come to recognize the amazing overlap of Scriptures and the historic events time after time after time that have occurred yeah. in the past 150 years. Yeah, amazing thing. First of all, first of all, it came from the days of Messiah, you had a portion that was read in the synagogues every week. They'd open up the scrolls and they'd have a portion to be read. Uh, it was more, it, it, it became crystallized kind of in the Middle Ages. And so it's been in every synagogue. You have, you know, the same scriptures being read. They open the scrolls, they chant the scripture. Amazing. I started seeing, well, whoa, 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 this one happened there. For instance, Mar we mentioned Mark Twain, right? He comes there in his final the finale of his journey, right, in, in Israel, he's walking the streets of Jerusalem, and you know what's happening? They're opening up the scrolls, and they're reading, appointed for that day is the prophecy that the stranger will come to the land, and he has no idea. Then you look, for instance, uh, the next Jubilee, you look at 1917, and they're opening, and they're reading about the first mention of Abraham uh, claiming Beersheba, Beersheba. The, well, well, that week, that Israel, after 2,000 years, the, the well, the, the British army restores, they capture Beersheba yes, they for the Jewish people. 
people. You look. I'll give you another one. Um, I mean, it's amazing. But but another one is that that look at that. There's there's a time that in this the, um, when the Jewish people when when the United Nations votes for Israel for for the, to go back to Israel and it's going to be named. It, actually, it's going to be called Israel for the first time. It's going to be called Israel. Well, the thing is that the scripture that day was the Sabbath. That day they're opening the scripture and it's the scripture of of Jacob returning to the <laughs> land and being called Israel. It's the birth of Israel. And I'll, I'll just mention one more. On May 14th, the day that Israel was born, it was a Friday night yes. and a Saturday. It's a Sabbath. So there's an appointed word. What is the appointed word? It's it's the appointed word where God says, I will bring them back to the land. I will plant them in the land. They will blossom and nobody will nobody will remove them again. They will never again be On removed. the day On that the day. they announce it. Amazing. You know, and we are familiar with a, a portion of Scripture. When Jesus went to the synagogue, he opened the portion yes. of Scripture that day, read it, and said it is fulfilled That's in your right. hearing. And it was that particular Scripture on that particular day. So That's right. we are familiar with that concept, but you have just That's opened amazing. up a world of, of beauty and how all those days have fallen prophetically amazing. just as God intended. It shows you how God is in charge of everything. Well, I'm going to follow up with uh, what you said and what you expanded on with the year 1867. And the Prashas. So let's do it this way. Let's have a bit of a lightning okay. round okay. regarding some of the other topics you raised okay. in the Oracle. So what is Herzl's countdown? Herzl, the, who's, the, who's the founder of modern Israel, he before before he dies, and actually in his diary, actually at the beginning, he writes down, listen, he says he had, they had a Congress, and they said, you know what, today I founded the Jewish state. Nobody will believe me, but it, but in at least 50 years, the whole world will see it. Okay. He writes it down in 1897. At 50 years, Jubilee, by the way. Jubilee. Jubilee and it comes to 1947 when Israel is voted into existence. Not, But when I looked even deeper, when you look at the, the date of his diary, it it goes back to the exact, it leads you to the exact day. When the UN years, voted yeah, for the yeah, partition 50 plan. 50 years to the day. Amazing. All right, next one. <laughs> what is the Masada algorithm? Okay, another another one. Uh, you know, when when the Jewish people lost Jerusalem, they lost Jerusalem. The Romans came in 70 A.D. Then a few years later, they they lose Masada, the last stand. So you got Jerusalem, and then Masada, it's all over. But in the re in, in the restoration of Israel, if you reverse it all, because now it's restoration, reverse it all, it means the Jewish people will return to Masada. Reverse it, then they'll return to Jerusalem. Well, they do. They return to Masada, and then, but here's the thing. If you count the time in ancient times from the fall of Jerusalem to the fall of Masada and reverse it from, the, from when they return to Masada, and they're gonna, that means they're going to return to Jerusalem, it gives you, it ends up pointing out to the day June 7th, 1967, the day that Israel returned to Jerusalem. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I am looking forward to being in heaven when the <laughs> Lord points out all the ways oh, that yeah. he wove history together, and we sometimes didn't see it. You, my friend, have just peeled back some of the layers of mystery to reveal these things to us today. All right, so moving on. What is the Jubilee in man? Okay, 1967 is another Jubilee. And what is the restoration? Everyone shall return to their land that they lost. Well, Jerusalem is what they lost. So in 1967, Jubilee, they returned. The Israeli soldiers come on the Temple Mount, which is really where it all began. Okay, now at the, you know, what happens there in Jubilee? You sound the shofar, right? At the moment that the soldiers return to the Temple Mount, a shofar is sounding. They hear a shofar. And the guy who's sounding it is named Rabbi Goran, Rabbi Shlomo Goran. Now, he's not, he's not doing it because he knows the Jubilee. He's just doing it at the moment. Rabbi Shlomo was born in 1917, the other Jubilee. So now he's 50 years old. He's a living Jubilee. He is, he's sounding the sound of the Jubilee. As they come, they return to their land, Jubilee. And when I look deeper, uh, Tim, the name Goran actually means threshing floor. The place that they returned to was the threshing floor. And it also means, in Hebrew, it means threshing floor. In Polish, it means the horn. The horn. <laughs> he was born, you know, oh, okay. for this whole thing. My goodness. Well, and we've just touched the surface yeah. on the yeah. oracle. So, yeah. folks, get a copy of the oracle if you haven't read it, and please dive right in because this is just a touch of uh, what is explained there in that great book. The Harbinger II focuses attention once again on 9-11 here in the United States and observes the lingering fallout from that tragic day. So you actually write this. You said, since those days, there have been those who have turned to God and the rising of movements for the purpose of turning and pockets of revival. But for a massive return or a national turning, it has not happened. And America's mainstream culture has turned only further and more brazenly away. And in, in this as well, America is following in the ominous path of ancient Israel. 
Now, I would only submit we're also like ancient Judah, blessed beyond oh, yeah. measure, yeah. but also turning away from the God who has blessed us. So let's briefly review the four parts of yeah. that book, The Harbinger Two. In part one, you reintroduce us to Nuriel, who yeah. is your, your young man who is sort of the, uh, the account uh, writer of what has happened. And again, I talked to you about the fact his name harkens back to the light of God, but part two is called the unrevealed. What does that refer to? Okay, yeah. Well, well, the thing is, that the, the Harbinger 2 was the only book I held off for eight years holding back from writing it because I knew when I wrote the Harbinger, it was it, the Harbinger is about the beginning template of judgment, not the end. It's what begins when right. that first strike comes on the land. That's the beginning. Then the nation has a window of time to come back. And if it doesn't, great shakings come on the land. So in 2019, and I'm praying, and basically the Lord leads, it's going to be the Harbinger 2. And I had a very strong sense, and I shared it from this, this this podium where we are right now, that I believe that 2020 was going to be a year of great shakings, and it was going to be the continuation of the Harbinger, uh, what, what the mystery. And so I had to write it at that time. So it has three part, three parts in it. One is well, the unrevealed are the things that I didn't reveal back then. There was more that I didn't reveal than I did reveal in the Harbinger. So that that the second part is the manifestation of what has happened since, and the third part is what's happening now. Where we're going. So I'll just give a quick taste yes. of of the of the unrevealed. For instance, I never shared this. Okay, one is one is that. That on the uh, you know the 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 uh, the d before the strike of 9/11 came that week that opened up all around New York City and around the world they're opening up the scrolls to that parsha and then what they open up to it's appointed for nine for leading into 9/11 is the scripture where God warns a nation that has known Him that is turning away that now the judgments are coming and it describes the judgment says a, uh, an enemy is going to come from far away he'll come like an eagle descending swooping down, swooping down. and and literally the first plane that began 9/11 it has a it has an image on the back, which is an image of an eagle swooping down. I won't go through it all that, but even, I'll tell you, on the morning of 9-11, all throughout the Northeast, the shofar, the ancient sound of the watchman, starts sounding exactly as the events occur. We can't go into it, but there's so much, but that's just a little taste of it. Wow, the unrevealed. And you had much more where that came from. What about the second part, or part three in the book itself? is the manifestations. Where does the, that take us? That is what has happened since the since the Harbinger came out. It has not stopped. The warnings have continued and the Harbingers have appeared. And I, for instance, one of them involves that tree. We were talking about that tree before. One of the nine Harbingers originally, it didn't stop. It continued on, this, this tree at Ground Zero, and manifested one of the most powerful signs of judgment. I won't go through it, but it's there. Another one is an, when, a, when a nation, when Israel was, was entering into judgment, the signs of false gods, the images of gods appear in the land. Well, it happened in New York. the The biggest image of a false god in uh, in planet Earth. It, they made they converted the Empire State Building into a foreign god, the god Kali of death and destruction over New York City. Kali or Shiva, which is Kali, it? Kali, Kali, okay. Kali, which is uh, which is linked to Shiva actually. And so, and not only that, the day that they do it, by the way, they're, they're, the the scrolls are being opened in New York City, and the scroll is God warning the nation: do not make an image. It's going to lead to judgment. And and I will. There's so much. I'll even. I won't, I won't go through the detail, but even one of the most dramatic Supreme Court decisions, part of it, America's apostasy, takes place on the day that God removed the wall that judgment would come to the nation. Wow. You know, I actually, when I read that in your book, I went to the Internet and I looked up a copy of that picture. And sure enough, oh. on a day when they were putting pictures of uh, bunny rabbits and yeah. animals, they ended with that photo. And you think, who in their right mind right. wanted to put that, that false pagan god up? But they did. Yeah. It was a demonstration yes. of exactly what you're yes. talking about, turning away from the true and living God to false and pagan gods. All right. Well, the final part of your book, uh, The Harbinger 2, is called The Coming. Obviously, that harkens to what is yet to come. What did that really do? Yeah, feel that like? is what is happening now and where it's going. Now, I started writing when I knew I had to write the book for 2020. I knew I had to warn God's people for that year. So I started writing it in January 2020. And before, within two months, all oh, the shakings come upon the land. Now, when I looked back, I look back at, at the original book, The Harbinger. It's a chapter called Things to Come. It talks about how the shakings are going to come. It talks about it talks about the nation is going to be divided. It's going to be division. The it talks about the breakdown of infrastructure. It talks about economic collapse. It talks about, uh, you know, all these things that 
that are happening that are happening but it also it also gives a time thing there's there's a chapter in the harbinger called the, the well i won't even say what the chapter because it'll give it away but i'll say this it, that it, the question's asked and the original harbinger is asked is how long between that first shaking and when the greater shakings come okay now the the harbinger two reveals it well the answer is it with with in ancient israel it was 19 years from the first the strike on the land to the greater shakings well when was the strike on the land with america it was 9 11 it was tw 2001, 2001. Add when is the 19th year? The 19th year is the year 2020 when the shakings come upon the land. So literally, literally, Tim, as I'm writing the book, it's being fulfilled. It's happening. And one of the shakings that happens in the 19th year, the prophet Jeremiah speaks about it, is a plague comes upon the land. And he actually links it. Actually, I won't go through it, but it actually has the mystery behind the plague is linked to something very major with, with Jeremiah and very major with America that, that he actually gives the place where it's going to come. It gives the the dates of when it's coming to America, I mean, it's it's mind-boggling. But we're living in the mystery right now. Here's a question for you. Even as we begin this new year, 2021, and as we continue to seem to descend into further paganism, secularism, uh, drama, trauma, mm -hmm. and division, is God further lowering his hedge of protection around us, allowing us to experience the ramifications of rejecting him? It certainly seems that way. I mean, look at look at what's happened. One thing after another, the shaking. By the way, I didn't even mention one of the things in the original Harbinger says civil disorder, disorder yes. throughout. Well, it's all happening. Well, that's again, that's why, Tim, and I've never had this with a book before that I knew I had to write it now. It had to, had to come on now. Um, I believe that, that, listen, there's only, we are following this pattern. And that window, I saw the danger of that window of grace, those years, which is part of the biblical pattern, coming to an end. And now we're watching, I believe, it coming to an end. There's still Listen, at the end of the Harbinger 2, I, I talk about hope and how to prevail no matter what goes on. You know, and there is hope with God, and, and what do we need to know for the future? But when you look at, the, look at America, if it does not turn back, it's judgment. Well, obviously, one of the ways that God allows judgment to come is he gives us over to our reprobate hearts. So whether it's embracing secularism, paganism, some of the things that we are turning our, our minds and our hearts toward lead to these ramifications. So all he has to do is allow the natural outcome mm -hmm. of those choices to be manifest, and it seems to be happening. Well, what would you say for Christians who are trying to weigh how yeah. to respond to a world that is growing darker by the day? How do we maintain our hope mm -hmm. uh, and make sure that even as we are present-day realists, uh, we maintain an eternal yeah. optimism yeah. and share the hope of Christ uh, yeah. and what God has revealed to us yeah. with the world. Yeah, I mean, all my books end with hope. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for, they do. for those who will say yes, including the Harbinger too. And and what do we need to know? Well, the thing is, listen, we got to be all the more plugged into God. We have to be more more connected to God. If we're not connected to God during when this all happens, we need to be in prayer. We need to be in His presence. We need to be in faith because that's what's going to keep us. Number one. Secondly, we 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 touch where, where I know we we touch this in the book. That is the dark gets darker. The lights have to get brighter. Yes, so do. don't be afraid of it because these are, as we said, these are the days of Elijah. These are the days of, of, of the people of God. So be bold. Let's don't compromise because God is, it says the eyes of the Lord are searching the entire earth, looking for the one whose heart is completely his. You be that one. You be that person and he will lift you up. So this could be our greatest moment. These are, these are the, the moments that make Paul's and Esther's and, and Elijah's and Moses's. You don't yes. have a Moses without Pharaoh. You know, you know. So, so listen, don't fear, but this is your moment to rise up in God and go to higher ground, and God will use you mightily. For such a time as this. For as such a time as this. So for those who don't already know the Lord as Savior, this is a time to do as you uh, advocated on the mall in Washington, to return, yes. to return to yes. the Lord. But for those who are His, we are to be watchmen, sounding yes. the warning, and also declaring the truth of how to receive hope through faith in Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, that's it. Don't don't be silent. Now's the time. If the darkness is going crazy, you know that the, what you have is powerful. So don't be silent. And the message is, listen, God is calling the, calling the, those who don't know him to return. He's calling the church to return to what it was in the book of Acts. Yeah. And, and that's, what it, that's, our oper that's our chance right now. I'm so glad I was able to connect with Jonathan Kahn at his headquarters at Beth Israel in New Jersey. He is right about the chance God is giving us right now. He is calling us to return to Him as a nation and as individuals. That is why Jonathan coordinated a Christian gathering known as The Return last year in Washington, D.C. Jonathan has a unique gift for communicating beautiful truths of Scripture that spring from an understanding of Jewish culture and Hebrew. 
If you'd like to receive a copy of either of the fantastic books we discussed today, The Oracle or The Harbinger 2, just call us at the number on your screen or visit our website. Each book is available for a donation of $25, and that includes shipping. I know you'll be encouraged by Jonathan's insights, as I was when I read these two books. We'd like to end today's episode with a moment of application, what we call, how then shall we live? So before we close, the question remains, how bad is it in America today? This spring, an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel was fired from his command position for decrying the rise of Marxism in the military. The Secretary of Defense has declared that climate change and the inclusion of transgender troops are more pressing issues than the military threats that are rising around the world. Our Secretary of Health and Human Services is pursuing a radical agenda to promote unfettered abortions. And America is once again using its diplomatic clout to pressure other nations to embrace a dizzying array of sexual identities and so-called progressive ideologies. But progress in the wrong direction does not heed the biblical warning of Proverbs 14.34, which says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. As we've documented before on Christ in Prophecy, America is living out the warning of Romans 1. Gleefully rejecting the God who blessed us, we are being given over to an increasingly reprobate culture. Eventually, God's patience will be exhausted and we will fall under His awful judgment. For those to whom so much has been given, the judgment will be swift and overwhelming. Like Judah of old, we will be swept from the world scene. What is a Christian to do? As Nathan Jones shared a couple of weeks ago, we have to stand on God's Word revealed to Habakkuk. The righteous shall live by faith. Where do you put your faith? In your bank account or stock portfolio? Those will be whittled away by the specter of rising inflation or economic collapse. In one of the political parties? Well, especially in recent years, those have proven wholly inadequate to producing leaders capable of turning us away from looming disaster. In America itself? When I was a brand new Air Force cadet, seven basic military responses were drilled into my brain. Yes, sir. No, sir. No excuse, sir. Sir, may I ask a question? Sir, may I make a statement? Sir, I do not know. Or, sir, I do not understand. And obviously, when responding to a female cadre, the beginning would be, ma'am. Well, occasionally, a new cadet would make the mistake of responding, I believe so, sir. Cadre would descend on that hapless individual who erred so egregiously and verbally pummel them into better awareness. The enhanced training would eventually end when a cadre would finally ask, Cadet, what do you believe in? The proper response was, Sir, I believe in myself, I believe in my God, and I believe in the United States of America. Well, 37 years older and much wiser, I pray, I can tell you unequivocally that I no longer have blind faith in America. It has disappointed me too often. And you should not put blind faith in me. If I have not disappointed you yet, you simply haven't known me long enough. The only entity worthy of my entire absolute trust in yours is Almighty God. Jesus Christ has never disappointed me, and He will never let you down if you put your trust in Him. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The good news is that He has paid the penalty for your sins, meaning that He offers salvation from the wrath to come and an eternal relationship with God the Father. He will never leave you or forsake you. And He is coming soon to gather all who have put their faith in Him. Until that glorious day, this is Tim Moore for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, Godspeed. Thank you.